Hey everybody, this is Justin with Songbirds Music Art and Dance Center, and we have a really short bonus video today talking all about spray paint. This is to prepare us for the final video in our guitar building series, but it also works for any kind of art projects or building projects that you need to use aerosol spray for. I'm out here in the backyard, and I'm here because you never want to spray paint anything inside your home. It's just way too toxic. So I'm back here in this tree, and I have a piece of scrap wood that I'm not using for anything out here hung, hanging on a chain so that no um, you know, particles from the ground or my fingers have to touch it while I'm spraying. That way I get a really clean work piece and that there's not going to be any marks or dust imprinted in the surface. I'm using scrap wood because I just want to show you a demonstration. I highly encourage that you practice on something like this so that you don't have your first attempt at spray painting being on your actual work piece that you care about. Now this is just a high gloss white spray paint found at Home Depot that we're using, very common, Rust-Oleum. Um, make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions on anything that you're using. I've already gone ahead and shaken this over a minute um, as the bottle says. Now when you're using this spray paint, the most important thing to watch out for and we want to avoid is runs or drips. And those happen when you spray one spot of the work surface for too long. So the whole goal here is to move quickly and evenly across the workpiece to get kind of like a dust coat. Yes, I know that does cause a lot of overspray and it does seem like you're kind of wasting paint, but it's worth it because that way you don't have to stop what you're doing, sand down any runs or drips, and then paint over again. That is like a, just a recipe for frustration. So we're gonna take it very slow and we're gonna be very cautious with it. I've taken my shaken spray paint can and I'm going to point it about 10 to 12 inches away from the work piece, kind of like this. When I press the button first, I'm going to be shooting it off of the work piece, not on it. The first little blast of paint is always really concentrated and that's a great way to get runs. So we wanna shoot that, that part off of the wood so that it doesn't hit our work piece. Okay, so I'm gonna put it here and then I'm going to slowly pass in front of the piece, going kind of in a horizontal fashion, like a little horizontal zigzag until I get to the very ends. And then I'm going to finish my pass well off of the work piece before detaching or depressing the button. Okay, so let's do that. Here we go. I'm going to start off the workpiece and do my little passes like so. There we go, and that's my first coat. You notice how it is kind of blotchy because we only had the first one in and that primer coat tends to soak into your surface, especially if it is wood, but that is okay, we will do it again. This is uh, tacky enough paint that I like to do a second little mini coat after the first one, but I'm gonna go in a different direction. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but in vertical passes like this. Spin in there a lot. I should uh, use two chains next time. But anyway, so I have two small passes there, one horizontal, one vertical, so that we don't have too much overlap or too many waves and ripples starting in our paint. Now this is done. I'm going to let this wait at least an hour before recoating, and I'm not going to do more than three coats per day. So I like to do one like in the morning, one sometime in the afternoon or whenever it's convenient, and then one before I go to bed. When this is drying in between coats, I will take this inside somewhere where I don't live, like the garage or I don't know, an, an attic space or somewhere that you're not going to be breathing. This prevents it from getting dust and bugs on it. Um, if you do get dust and particles stuck in the paint, you do have to sand it off. So we want to try to uh, contain this. If you have, um, some people build like a makeshift box over their pieces, or some people even have like a paint hood or some plastic they can drape around it. Whatever works for you is fine. We just do want to prevent dust from sticking to the paint. So this looks like it probably needs two more coats. So like one day of painting would be enough. Um, as I said, I'm going to wait over an hour, do it once more, and then once more, and then it'll be done after that. So I hope you learned something here. Most important things are, of course, spray paint always outside. Start your spray paint flow off of the workpiece. Keep it about 10 to 12 inches away and go nice and steady, leaving off pressure after you've already passed the end of the workpiece. Thanks so much. I hope you learned something. If you are building the guitar with us, make sure that you practice on some scrap wood like we just did out here, and then we can try it on the guitar next week for the final installment of our video series. Thanks so much. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you guys later.